Let's jump into story number one. Now, my story number one, man, this was a wild situation for me. This was the first time that I seen a prison robbery. Now, we're going to sit back one day and we're going to do a whole documentary where I bring y'all through my juvenile incarceration to my adult, my very first time to my very last time. Now, during this time, I'm probably like 15 years old. I get booked for a home invasion. Now, when I get locked up and I get detained, I go to court. They tell me that I'm detained. So I'm looking like, man, what detained mean? They tell me like, listen, you can't go home until you go to court. You can probably go to court in like 48 hours. So I'm like, all right, bet. They sends me out to the detention center. When I get out there now, we go to court in probably like a day and a half or probably two days. Two days we wait, we go to court. Now when we go to court, they tell us that I'm committed. So now I'm looking like, man, what, what do uh, committed mean? They like, you are no longer property of your parents. You are now property of the state. You property of DJS. So I'm like, all right, bet. So now when we get back to the jail for real, now I'm getting my bed, whatever the case may be. And we on full hall now. Full hall is the intake center. I done told y'all what that was. That's when I meet Ed and Willie. So now as we ripping and running through the intake center, I'm getting ready to go up on the hill. Now they call it the hill because full hall is on the bottom of the compound. Clinton, Roosevelt, Mandela, the units, they are on top of a hill. Now when you get transferred up into the hill, a transportation van going to come grab you probably like four or five in the morning. They going to move you up there and that's where you going to start serving your time, fighting your case until you either go home or you going to get committed and they going to send you to placement. Now placement is like a juvenile prison. That's where you going to serve your real life bit. So I'm like, all right, boom. So now that I'm learning the way, we stays down uh, uh, four hall for probably like, let's just say two weeks. Now I told y'all my very first night down there on Ford, my man Lou, he gets knocked off smoking the cigarettes in his cell. That's when they shook his cell down. They came down, shook my cell down, had everybody do the wild strip search, all that nonsense. Now that I'd have made a few acquaintances, me, Ed, uh, uh, me, Ed, Willie, Kane, and Lou, all of us got our little squad. But now once the two weeks go by and they transfer us up to the units, we all get separated. Me, I go to Clinton. Now when they tell me what Clinton is, I'm like, what that is? They like, boy, that's the aggressive unit. That's where all the little aggressive dudes at. I'm like, all right, that's a bad now. Why they sent me up there? I don't no probably was just trying to bust me up but i'm ready for whatever coming my way i ain't looking for no problems but i'm handling any of them that come my way i promise you that now he gets up there everything cool i think i know like one person up there fast forward another little two three weeks i done locked in with a few dudes from over west up there so we ripping and running doing our thing so one day we come from child hall we get back up on the unit they like shit man we ready to rob yo so i'm like what you mean they like shit we ready to rob them i had never heard of a prison robbery i'm like what you mean you ready to rob them with rob them with what one of my little mans he got a big pen other little dude, he got a sock just full of batteries. And then the other one, he got a sock full of remotes. So I'm like, man, what the fuck y'all crazy? Now, when we go into the little, we had like a cubby room. So now we in the little gym day room. They down there, they got the little shirt. They like, shit, we ready to mask up. I'm like, what mask? So now they got shirts. You can just put it on top of your head. They make the print, cut out the eyes, and they cut out the mouth so they can breathe. And then they had just tied up. And I'm like, man, y'all on some bullshit. Now, when they catch the little dude, you would have like commissary day or every night we got little snacks anyway. So some people, they wouldn't eat their snacks. They'd just save it up. Then when they go to commissary, they'd get more snacks and they'd just have a whole stash. Some people hid their stuff in the cell. The others hid it in their cubby. But you really couldn't have too much stuff in your cell because they'd make you take it out and put it in the cubby room. But everybody ain't want to do that for situations like this. So now they catch the little dude. He ready to go in there and grab his food. When he going into the cubby room, my little homeboys and them, they throw the mask on. They running there behind him. When they running there behind him, boom, they try to shut the door, but you can't shut it all the way. So I can just see the little crack right there. One of them up the little big pen on them crazy. The other one just smacked him in the head with the batteries. Boom. Now, when he do that, little yo who getting raw, he start backing up against the wall. Of course, they drag him to the floor. They get the punishment. Ma, man, bitch, lock it is. Ma, he's, he yell out the locker number. Now, when they see what little cubby hole it is, it's like a whole wall just full of little squares for real. He got all this snacks wrapped up in a the shirt. They grab that, dump it in their shirt, breaks out. Now, this is what stood out to me. Them knowing that they doing this and they know that they ready to get caught because one shorty who just got robbed, once he come out or that they find him in that cubby room, they going to run the cameras back because there's nowhere you can go. It's only one unit that ain't like when you over an adult jail and you got tears. It's just one unit, so it ain't no blind spots. Now, they run to the bag, they bust it down, and this is the crazy thing. They only got two. This is when the Jolly Rancher sodas was real popular. They had two Jolly Rancher sodas, probably like three bags of chips, and three Rice Krispie treats, two snippers. Now, they goes in the back of the unit. This is where the actual cells is. 
They go right there, one of, uh, running one of their cells. They eat everything probably in less than 15 minutes. Lord dude, he comes out, stumble out. Once he get himself together, he tell the staff, of course, they lock everybody down, run the cameras back, see who did it. Now they grab them up. They really can't do nothing but put them on seclusion. Now seclusion is when you just got to stay in yourself. It's like you on lock up by yourself, but they still got to come feed you. You can't go to the child hall with us. Everything going to come to your door for the next 90 days. So they go through that and they come back out. But that put a picture in my mind like, oh, all right. People in here really do something like that. Like you can still get robbed even though you locked up and they going to hurt you in the process. So when I seen them do that, I knew like, oh, uh, yeah, they moving on a different time in here. This the type of time I got to be on at all times. So that was a crazy situation, man. But with that being said, family, let's jump into story number two. Now, my story number two, man, this is another wild situation that was an eye opener to me. Now, during this time as I'm incarcerated down here in the juvenile joint, you got people that's coming down from waverings, and then you got people that's going up from waverings. Now, what a waver is, you a juvenile, and, they, and your crime is either so heinous or you so close to being an adult, they want to charge you as an adult, or you didn't already been charged as an adult, and you trying to come back to a juvenile because you are still a juvenile. So now, during this time, we got a lot of people that's coming back down from over the jail that can call like robberies, armed robberies, car jackings, little stuff like that. Anything damn near under attempt, they was coming back down. So now, during this time, it's probably like a Wednesday, we get like four little dudes who coming from back over the jail, they come down on our unit. Now, when they come down, they moving with a different mindset. They moving with a different tone of, uh, of the way that they carry things. Now, what I mean by that is they from over west, two of them from over west, two of them from over south. But when they come back down, in they mind, they moving like, man, we're adults. This some old kid shit. We ain't going for that. We'll take this thing over. So now you got that put a press on us that's already juveniles who ain't been to the to the adult jail yet. Mind y'all, I'm on a waiver in myself, but whole time when I end up going to court, I fight it for like four or five months. I end up beating my waiver and come back down. But what that does is it guarantees that you ready to go to placement. Because if you don't go over to jail, you go into placement. I done told y'all that's like the juvenile prison. So you guarantee that you ready to do a year better. Now, as they come down, they moving with a different mindset. So every time that staff is telling them to do something, they giving them back talk or they damn near chastising them. So one day we got the little dude Marco for real. So when Marco come on the unit, he gets shipped over there with us. We go in the child hall one day, we go to the rep. Once we get back, we chill on the unit. They call us for rep. We go down there. Now, when we really leave, he over there shooting the basketball. West come up to him like, man, you know, put the ball up. He like, what, man? Get the fuck out of my face, man. I'll put the ball up when I'm ready. He like, yo, I don't know who you think you is. Of course, West get the, you know, they get to going at it. Lil Marco throws the ball at West's face. Boom! Now, granted, I cannot lie, West ain't no sucker. He was the type of CO that, we had COs back there that'll dump you on your shit. We had COs back there who done got fired or who done been up under investigation for Ellen dudes out, uh, uh, putting them up against the wall. We had one situation where the, uh, my man Barry, he get into it with a youth, whole time Barry grabbed him up. I lied to y'all now, when they showed the camera back, he bounced them off the walls, like turned them sideways. Boom, turn into this wall. Boom, turn into the other wall. Boom, throws them on the ground. Boom. But he, man, listen, he was probably like six foot, probably 220 pounds, all muscle. I'm talking about cock diesel. So we had staff like that. So when Wes come up to him, he like, man, you done lost your fucking mind. Whole time Marco crack him. Mop. Now when he crack him, now Wes, he got the green light because he couldn't put his hand on him because... He got to be a professional and it's a juvenile, but Marco was probably like 17 and in probably like six months, he was ready to turn 18. But when he cracked West, that then all the laws go out the window after he didn't put his hands on him. Man, West say, oh yeah, that's what I like. Whole time he go up under him because West used to wrestle. He do some old wrestling shit, get up under Marco, scoop him. He put him in like the little Brock Lesnar over the shoulder joint. I'm talking about DD Tim straight on his head. Boom, man, when he do it. We all thought Wes broke his neck. Man, Wes jump up so fast, he go to kick him, but he remember that this a, a, a juvenile. He grab him right here by the shirt, lift him up, hit him straight in his mouth. Mop! Drops him straight to the ground. Put it on line! Now, when they say put it on line, that means he want all of us to line up like I told. Anywhere, when you locked up as a juvenile, everywhere that we move to, we got to be like this, hands behind our back. They call it parade rest. I don't know why they made us do this, but this is what they made us do. So, whole time, once he drop him on his head, boom, he jump up, tell everybody, man, put it on line. Whole time, we all line up, send the count back to make sure everybody accounted for. We head out. Marco still lay right there. Neck probably possibly uh, uh, broke. Coach Bolden, who was the gym coach, I done told y'all about him. Number one who looked like he eat weights for a living. Whole time, he jumped on the phone, called medical. You hear the, uh, as we walking back up the hill, going to the unit, you see the little medical John did coming down. Down there to get Marco up, man. Marco came back on the unit. Probably 30 days later, he had that little cast that be like he couldn't move his neck. 
crazy situations, man. But with that being said, fam, let's jump into story number three. Now, my story number three, man, we're going to keep rocking and rolling with these dudes who was coming down from over the jail in this mindset that I was exposed to. So now we got the little dude Poochie. Now, Poochie, I think he was booked for like two armed robberies. And the only reason that he was able to get uh, way back down was he had a real paid lawyer. He really was done for, but his parents paid for a paid lawyer or he did from whatever he was doing in the streets. But he had a real good lawyer, so he ended up coming back down off the way run. Now, when he come down to the jail, he gets sent to an hour unit. So he coming over there, but he got this little complex with him. And most dudes who had already been over the jail, this how they think. I didn't already been around adults. I didn't dealt with adult convicts and inmates. And I didn't already dealt with adult COs. So y'all, they look at this like some kids shit. They look at them like babysitters. So they don't know how to take instructions. They don't know how to take directors. This is how the people's write it up. So now when Poochie get transferred to our unit, he cutting up. He basically doing whatever he want to do. He talking to the staff crazy. But like I told y'all too, we got certain staff members and certain COs who retire street dudes or they were still active street dudes. They just wanted a little side job. So don't ever get that confused. Now, when Poochie come right there, one day we go to the child hall. Once we leave from there, we, we always come back to the unit. We chill for probably like an hour, and they'll start dispersing or calling different units to come down to get their rep. Go down there for an hour, come back the next unit to go. Now, they call us. We goes down there to rep. We down there cooling. Like I told y'all, we had the free weights during this time in. We had like the little bench press machine, the little bench, the actual bench. You could bench press. We had the free weights. You could curl. And we had a curl ball. So we all in the gym working out for real. Poochie and another little dude, they get into an argument about something. I really think it was ego because like I told you, Poochie had this mentality of he done already been over the jail. So he think he's stronger than everybody. He more sharper than everybody. He more thorough than everybody. Everything in the book. So now, boom, they get to get into a situation. Fussing, I ain't gonna lie, Poochie smacked the shit out of him. Boom, now when he do it, the little dude stand up for himself. He swing, they get to fight. Mop, mop, mop. Now, the only two staff members that's right there is the little dude, Marbury, and we had a new dude who was just high named Green. So Green starts sprinting across the gym. He get right there. By the time he gets to the fight, everybody done already broke it up. But him being a rookie, he started doing the most. He being all extra. Now, Marbury, he knows, it, but he was a soft chump too. But he knew like, all right, man, they done fought. They broke it up. It ain't no big deal. He don't feel like doing no paperwork the whole time. Green being new, he come over there. He seen that. Poochie was the one who was initiating and he was the instigator. So he trying to grab him up. He get all smart, man. Put it on the line. He He's trying to take Poochie from the gym and take him back up to the unit and put him on seclusion. So Poochie like, man, what? Man, get the fuck out of my face. I ain't going up there. So Green go to grab him. He, man, get the fuck out of me. He go to grab him again. I don't know if it was out of reaction or Poochie meant to do it. He catch him with a mean left. <clears throat> now when he hit him, Green straight fall down to the ground. Poochie jump on top of him, get to crushing him. Mop, mop, mop. But... This is where that, that adult mindset come in at. By this time, of course, Marbury has seen it. He trying to make his way. He ain't running because he's a big dude, but he making his way across the gym as fast as he can. When Poochie get up, instead of him just stopping and being done, he kicked Green in his face like two times. Mop, mop. Now, Green got a little belt on him with the mace and everything else that be on the, uh, the little CO belt. He grabbed a mace. He sprayed him like two times in his face. Wop, wop. He smacked him. Bang, shut up, bitch. Whole time, Green right there choking out the mace. By the time Marbury get right there, Poochie turned around. What's up, man? I wish the fuck you would. Marbury, like I told you, he a scared dude. But as he was running to the scene, he didn't call for backup. So now Marbury right there like, man, don't do it. Put the mace down. He got his mace up. This is crazy to us because we juveniles. And we seeing another juvenile against a CO. Both of them right there standing mace to mace. So now uh, uh, Poochie act like he ready to throw the mace at uh, uh, Marbury. He flinched the whole time. But that's all Poochie needed. He goes in for the kill. Boom. He get right there and just like charge him, like tackle him. Boom. Because he was a big boy. whole time. I don't know if Marbury was scared. He eat the hit all back to the ground. Poochie get to punish him. Mop, 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 mop. Fuck you talking about? Get the mace at him in his face, man. Listen to me. This is two people. Green is laid out right there, knocked out, but still choking on the mace. He didn't just punish Marbury. By the time, thank God, Coach Bolden pulled up. Like I told you, he ain't want no smoke with Coach Bolden. Bolden come through the door. Get the fuck on the ground now. Whole time, Poochie, he see he ain't got no win. He throws the mace over there on the side of the gym floor. You can hear it slide. Whole time, he lay down, put his hands out. Bolden get right there. Put his hands behind his back, cuff him up, uh, put him in the van. They drive him back up to the unit. He goes on seclusion, of course. Uh, uh, medical, get right there on the little medical John Diz. They go help Marbury and Green. All of us, they tell us, put it online. We get online, go back up to the unit. Now we in trouble for that. We probably was on seclusion for like a week for that because our unit fucked up wreck. But crazy situation. This was the mindset of dudes who was 
coming from over that city jail, getting weighed back down when they done already been exposed to what a grown man jail is like, man. And it was crazy. But with that being said, family, you know what it is. Thank y'all for riding with me. Well, you know you forever locked in with your boy Stories with V. At this time, family, you already know what I need y'all to do for me. Like, share, comment, smash that subscribe button, y'all. We'll be at 100K in no time. We have officially hit that 2,900 mark, man. We're 100 people away from that 3K. So let's hurry up and get there. So make sure you like, share, comment, share the video if you can. And tell a friend to tell a friend. Rush over here and smash that subscribe button, man. Also, everybody, check their status. Make sure you all subscribe. And make sure you hit that top notification bell so you notified every time the mall drop. Also, jump on them memberships, man. They $4. This is today's goal, man. Let's see if we can get 100 comments, 100 likes, and we're going to continue to try to dominate this algorithm, man. From the bottom of my heart, I love each and every one of y'all. Beat squad or no squad, because they don't mob how we mob. Let's go. <laughs>